Okay, everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about the last topic of chapter seven,、um, limiting reactants. Okay,、uh, there are some important concepts for us to learn in this、um, video, and we we also have、uh, some calculations to do. Let's take a look at this、um, uh, slide. Well, this slide tells us how we identify limiting reactants. Well, here this is an example based on how to make a pizza. Well, here this is a recipe for you to make a pizza: one crust, two cups of cheese, and five ounces of tomato sauce. Okay. Well, here you have four crusts and ten cups of cheese and fifteen ounces of tomato sauce. Okay. Now, based on the crusts only. Let you you just assume that you have unlimited supply of cheese and、uh, tomato so,、uh, sauce. Then, based on the four crusts, literally you can make four pizzas, right? Now, assume that you have unlimited supply of crusts and、uh, tomato sauce. Ten cups, based on the recipe here, ten cups can make five pizzas. All right, and.、Uh, If you assume that you have unlimited supply of crusts and、uh, cheese, then、um, based on the tomato sauce only, you have 15 ounces. You need five ounces for、uh, one pizza. Then 15 ounces will, in theory, will give you three pizzas. All right. So each、uh, starting material will give you different amount of、um, product. If you assume the other starting materials are excess, right? So, which one gives you the least amount of product? Then that one will be the limiting reactant. What do I mean? Four crusts will give you four pizzas. Ten、uh, cups will give you five pizzas, but fifteen、uh, ounces of tomato sauce will give you only three pizzas. Looks like the tomato sauce will limit how many pizza you can make. Okay,、um, that's going to be just a three. Therefore. Tomato sauce is going to be the limiting reactant for this example. Okay, so this is how we define the limiting reactant, the reactant that limits the amount of the product. Okay, so now let's introduce the three important concepts:、um, three, uh, theoretical yield, actual yield, and percent yield. Theoretical yield means the maximum amount of product that can be made. In this case, you can make three pizza maximum. Therefore, theoretical yield is going to be three. Okay,、uh, actual yield is going to be the actual amount of the product. Well, in theory, you can make three pizza. Okay, you can make three pizza. However, one of the pizzas、um, was eight was eight by your dog. Therefore, you have you end up with two pizza. So actual amount of product, actual yield would be two. Percent yield. Actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100 percent. So how do we do the calculation if you have those two data? Well, that's going to be two divided by three times 100 percent. Okay, this is how we identify theoretical yield, actual yield, and percent yield. Let's、uh, take a look at this、uh, example. Four equivalents of aluminum. Can react with three equivalent of O2 molecule to generate two equivalent of aluminum oxide.、Um, a reaction mixture contains this much of aluminum and this much of oxygen. It asks you three questions: Which reactant is a limiting rea reagent? Calculate the theoretical yield and calculate the percent yield if this much of aluminum oxide is produced. Okay. Well, how do we start? You have two reactants, and the mass of both reactants are given. How do we identify the limiting reactants? Okay, what we need to do is we treat those two reactants separately and calculate how much of the product can be generated, and then compare the data. Which one of the two reactants gives you less product? Then that one will be limiting reactant. Okay, might be a little bit confusing. I hope that our calculation can 
give you some better ideas. Well, for A, okay. Now let's consider aluminum first. That means you consider O2 is going to be axis. Okay, don't worry about how much O2 you have when you focus on aluminum. Okay, just assume that you have unlimited supply of O2. Okay, now let's calculate how many mole of aluminum oxide will be generated based on 5.81 gram of aluminum. Stoichiometry calculation. Okay, we just did. We just did some practice. We just discussed this topic in uh, in last in the previous video. Okay, so 5.81 gram of aluminum converts this mass to mole number of aluminum. So molar mass for aluminum 26.98 okay, gram of aluminum is one mole of aluminum. And then molar ratio between aluminum and aluminum oxide is 4 to 2. So 4 mole of aluminum will generate 2 mole of aluminum ox oxide. Okay. My calculation shows me that this is going to be 0 0.10767 mole of aluminum oxide. Okay, three significant figures. Now, let's consider the other reactants when aluminum is excess. Okay, is excess. So you focus on O2 in this case. You have 6.33 gram of O2, converts that to mole number of O2. Now, one mole of O2, that means it's 32.00 gram of O2. Okay, let me erase this, just want to be clear gram of O2 and then use the molar mass use the molar ratio between O2 and aluminum oxide to identify the mole number of aluminum oxide so according to the balanced equation it's a 3 to 2 so 3 mole of O2 at the bottom because you want to cancel this right so and 2 mole of aluminum oxide Okay, so if you do the calculation, that's going to be 0 0.13188 mole of aluminum, aluminum oxide. Now we can compare. Remember how we define limiting reactants? The reactant that can uh, that limit the amount of the product. Well, if you have 5.81 gram of aluminum, you can generate this much of aluminum oxide. If you have this much of oxygen, you can generate a little bit more aluminum oxide. So aluminum gives you less product, therefore aluminum is the limiting reactant. I'll use red circle to circle the limiting reactant. Okay. All right, this is a question A. Question B, calculate the theoretical yield. Well, theoretical yield means um, maximum amount of aluminum oxide can be generated. Okay. Well, the mole number of aluminum aluminum oxide is has been calculated. So for B, you just need to convert the mole number of aluminum oxide to mass. Zero point one zero seven six seven mole of aluminum oxide times one mole of aluminum oxide is 101.96 gram of aluminum oxide. Okay, so my calculation shows me it's going to be 11.0 gram aluminum oxide. So this is the theoretical yield. Now, question C, calculate the percent yield if this much of aluminum oxide is produced. So 7.24 is actual yield. It's given in this question. So according to the definition of the percent yield, okay, so 
C, percent yield would be the actual yield, 7.24 gram, divided by 11.0 gram times 100%. Okay, so that will give us 65.8%. And this is a percent yield. Okay, again, we will do more practice in class. And um, let me know if you have any questions.